Hello guys, welcome to my Retexture 101 tutorial. Uh, this is some very basic retexturing stuff uh, in GIMP. You can also do the same in Photoshop. I'm just too broke to afford it. So this is mainly for the Armour Free people. It's probably watching this right now. But this is also going to work for GTA 5. 5M, uh, 5M is the same shit. Uh, SFM or Gmod or whatever other game you're retexturing for. Uh, it should follow the same process. Right. So as I said before, I'm doing this mainly for armor free, so I'm going to load up an armor free texture. So overall stop, uh this is from XYI's Ranger Pack. Okay. Uh this is going to be quite simple to retexture, not many details, and you have a solid color version of the texture, which is pretty good. And what I mean by that is some textures have only come in like camouflage, uh so multi cam or one, whatever it is. And it's a bit of a pain in the ass to retexture. Um, I'm going to go through it in a bit on how to retexture those that don't have a solid color version. But this one does, so pretty cool. What we're going to do first is just to saturate it, make it grayscale, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and open your camouflage pattern. Okay, so in this case, we're opening multicam. Okay, mode overlay. Okay, there you go. This is very simple retexture. If you don't want to spend much time on it, this is done. Go on, do your shit. Uh, so it's probably going to be as bad as like Viking stuff, but yeah, very simple. Okay, now the reason we desaturated this is so we're actually using, I would say the true, I could, I could say like the true colors of multicam, okay, which is the tan green, the limeish color, dark brown, whatever. If I kept the original color of it, it would look a bit greenish, okay. So first thing you always do, desaturate the base uh, texture, okay, and apply it. Simple as that. Now. To add some more detail, what you can do is open the normal map or the NOHQ file, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Uh, as you can see, this one is in 2K resolution and not 4K, so this one is 4096, this one is 2048. So you can just rescale. Okay, there you go, boom. Now, low hint for GIMP users. Okay, you can most likely do it in PS2. Um, there's this little tab on the right that says interpolation. Usually it's in linear. And what it means, and very in a very easy way to understand it, is if you resize it, it's going to denoise. Okay, so there's not much noise, you know, but you lose some detail, which is the opposite of what we want. We want to add detail. So the simpler way to the simplest way to do this is just um, put interpolation as none. Okay, and that means it's not going to denoise at all, which, as I said, doesn't remove any any noise which sometimes might be bad if you're scaling from a 1k so 1024 by 1024 pixels if you're rescaling that to a 4k that's a problem but this one should be alright if we use no interpolation okay so what you're going to do now is desaturate it and another thing which a lot of people don't do is invert it okay reason is armor uses direct x and not open gl for some reason direct x normal maps are inverted which means whatever's supposed to I guess be going away from your body in this case or up is um actually going down. And whatever's supposed to be going down is going up. So an example here is the zip. As you can see the zip or what well, the zipper but is it has a bump here. You see where it's white, that's where light is gonna be going to bounce off or reflect or whatever. Um and the zipper's not really supposed to be coming out like the opposite way, right? So if I invert it, there you go, it's going down, it's going towards your body, okay, and that's because the fabric on the right and left side of your chest are overlapping the zipper, okay, so as you can see, inverted, uh, it's going to go from a white-ish, mostly white or light grey color to a dark grey and sometimes black color. Um, what you're going to do now is go to mode here and change it to overlay, okay, and tone it down a bit, okay, it's going to depend on the texture, I usually use 70, uh, 80, really depends. But okay, uh, as you can see, that adds some detail to the Velcro. It adds a bit of detail to uh, the bumps here and there, okay, where, as I said before, that's where the light's supposed to bounce off. Okay, now, here's one thing. Seams, okay, very important if you're doing clothes uh, or anything that's going to be, I guess, the main part of your model. Um, it's one thing people will notice straight away. Okay, so what I mean by seams, if you take a look here, this brown pattern goes from the right side of your chest to the this pocket over here. In real life, that doesn't happen. 
because well the pocket is made of another low fabric layer on top of it okay which means that the pattern is going to be moved around it's not going to be the exact same okay so I'm going to do it uh, with a lasso too okay you pretty much go around the, the pocket but the, as you can see it's very half fast I'm not really I really want to make it too complicated but pretty much you go around the pocket whatever whatever and uh, sharpen your selection and just paint a white oh sorry wrong layer okay paint a white inverse selection and then paint a black okay and now you created a mask now if you don't know how mask works uh, white means uh, well I guess it's it's there or well, it's visible and black is invisible so if I already made a little quick mask here okay if I apply that to my multicam layer okay drop it down here as you can see wherever it's white multicam is visible if it's black it's not visible so if I get a pencil here and put it white paint it here you can see the multicam pattern if I put it black and draw here okay you get the gist of it it's pretty easy pretty simple to understand um, and you've done a seam pretty basic one okay now you're going to do this for every single bit where there's supposed to be a seam this means you're going to be you're probably going to have like three or four different layers for with different masks okay it really depends on what you're texturing um, I'm going to show you in a bit what a final uh, file looks like for this texture it has quite a bit of masks okay but um, I'm just going to show real quick how you would easily make another mask so what you can do oh, sorry, is you delete the layer mask Okay, you move the multicam layer about. Uh, I would recommend having a swatch that's bigger than your actual um, your actual texture, so it's easier to just drag it around, and you're not going to have you know gray bits like I have. But anyway, layer to image size so that uh, the mask works properly. Add layer mask, Control V, and drop it down. And now what you're going to do is you're going to click on the mask colors and invert. And as you can see, you created a seam. Okay, the little brown pinkish gradient on the chest bit is not coming to the pocket, and all this brown thing isn't going here. Um, depending on the size of the pattern, you you might move it around, and it's still going to look like you don't have seams. I'm going to show that in a bit, and it might look kind of weird. So just move the pattern around again until you get a, a good seam. Now, some things. In textures like this one needs to be a solid color okay and so in this case the velcro you most likely want it to be a different color and not multicam there's a zipper here and here uh, there's a little bit uh, coming up here and I think there's a zipper down here which I just realized when recording this I'm pretty sure that's not on my actual PSD file might need to fix that later anyway so for these guys you are just going to do the same thing you did for a seam, you're going to use the lasso tool and select it. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to sharpen it, control C and control V from the original texture and just put it on top. Simple as that. Okay, and the reason you do that is because um, if I were, well, if, if, okay, this is one thing you could actually do. If you select here, okay, and just remove it from this mask, why is it not working? Might not work, mate. Oh, there you go. No, wait. That's stupid. Yeah, it's from this one. Stupid. Okay. So as you can see, it kind of works. But if you want to change the color of it, uh, it's like a tannish color. As you can see, it affects the color of the whole multicam. Okay, because as we did, be as you guys did before, it's overlaid on top. So you don't want to change the color of that, and that's why you copy and paste into another layer because you can simply colorize this okay there might be an easier way to do this in Photoshop or even GIMP I don't even know but this is the easiest way to do it okay and that's pretty much it okay so if I go to a complete um, or texture file like I have here which I was doing a while ago um, oh now I know why I didn't do the zipper oh no never mind I, I'm stupid I didn't it. did I do the zipper yeah I did okay never mind um, so if I come here to the folder with, I'm just going to get this one so it's easier to visualize. Um, if I come here, you can see each layer has a different mask. Okay, this is all made by hand using the lasso tool and painting here and there. So if I deactivate this one, as you can see, it hides um, places where there's supposed to be a seam. So here, this is 
the arm I'm pretty sure there's a seam right there if I just turn it off you can see that um, also seam between this bit over the shoulder and the back okay and that's why I made a mask so the pattern changes now what I was talking about before of the pattern being too small and repeating itself um, this is a great example of a pattern that doesn't change very often okay all scam is very small and if I I'm not sure if I just do this it should be all right because it's an overlay yeah that makes more sense okay as you can see uh, let's take the screen uh, bean looking thing for example as you can see it repeats right here repeats right here okay not a very big pattern so when I was doing this mask uh, quite a while ago what happened is I was moving the pattern around and somehow uh, this shape right here was like repeating itself actually it is repeating itself right here um, and sometimes it might look weird so it really just is uh, moving it around and making sure it doesn't repeat um, and yeah that's pretty much it another thing too is a layer that I have I just call a mask it's just a black layer and this just covers uh, the part of the texture that's not used so for this one you can go in blender and you can go to the UV um, window and you can just export the UV layout for this okay and then you invert it and paint it black and that's what you're gonna have okay okay I'm going to overlay this on the screen most likely show you guys how to do it very easy um, and yeah that this is how a full retexture thing is gonna look like as you can see I have a layer which I named velcro and shit uh, don't change just remind myself uh, I just made a duplicate of it recolored and to this tan color as you can see it's not really perfect you're gonna you might lose some detail until you put it normal but back on which I'm stupid I didn't realize it was off um, but as you can see I put a tan color which kind of matches both colors um, this has been sent off to someone else now that's taking care of this Australian project I'm not doing working on this anymore but yeah this is how it looks like now, this is another example okay of a pouch that most of you have probably seen before uh, the texture is called dingo bandolier in case from TFL most people use it on their setups so yeah, I wanted to resection this one to a tax. Okay, now this one don't have the original texture here anymore, but the original one is in multicam. Okay, and what we did here was use the base uh, texture because it wasn't green, desaturated. Boom, it works pretty well. Okay, now for this one, because we don't have a solid color texture, what I do is I grab a gray color, uh, which is hex code or HTML notation 474747 and then just paint it okay it's just a grayish color that kind of matches this and then you overlay the pattern and it works pretty well if we go to normal you can see how bright the pattern is so just use overlay now normal map on top inverted okay everything um, this is pretty similar in the sense of there's things here which you don't want to be camouflaged okay so there's a zipper here there's a zipper here okay so what are we going to do what you can do copy and paste from the original texture now even though the original texture is multicam the zipper bit isn't so you can just select that uh, via lasso tool and copy and paste uh, my dumbass was doing this kind of quickly because this is for a simple mod pack for a not pop that I didn't really care much about quality so I literally just made a layer okay and I colored it also with the lasso tool but I just colored uh, with the plastic before the zips are supposed to be and when the actual zipper is overlay the normal map you get the detail back um, and then I have this normal map for Cordura okay which is a type of fabric uh, pretty much just whatever they use for pouches and plate carriers or whatever so what I always use overlay it okay and as you can see I put on purpose I put the zip on top of it because if I put it on top here it doesn't make much sense the zipper is not supposed to have the texture so I just put it all the way up here um, and that adds some detail because if I don't have it the normal map the original normal map doesn't have any detail for the fabric it just looks blended it looks like plastic and that's why I added it okay adds some detail to it I'm not caring too much about these sections of the pouch because um, pretty sure part of, part of this texture here is not even used in the pouch this is probably the back uh, the only thing I'm worried about is this bit this is the main bit okay so um, after I added the detail, out of the zips, what else? Oh yeah, so the sides, alright, so it's this UV island and this one here. Uh, as you can see, there's some, if I deactivate this, it's a bit easier to see. 
As you can see, there's straps uh, to attach other stuff to it. So this is Molly or Pals. The Pals is the correct name, but anyway, um, on the sides. Okay. Now I wanted this to be a solid color, so I just literally painted it in the same color as the zip. And as you can see, uh, I purposely put it on top of the corridor uh, texture because I didn't want it to have that texture. So I just grabbed a webbing texture and overlaid. Okay, as you can see, it's only there, not anywhere else. You can do that with a mask, but I just did it uh, by doing the last one, just deleting uh, what I didn't want really. Now, for the normal map, as I said before, don't always want it 100%. Sometimes you want to tone it down. For this one, because we don't have uh, the shadows here for the base color, I want this all the way up. Okay. Um, now, for the Cordura bit and for the Molly or the, the Webby bit, uh, you might want to tone that down. Okay. You don't want that many bumps on it. You want to tone it down to maybe 60, 70%. It usually works. Same for the Webby, not too strong, not too light. You want it to look good, maybe a bit stronger than Cordura. And there you go. This is pretty much how to texture. Uh, pretty basic. Um, you can do the same thing in Substance Painter, which might be better because you can actually visualize the pattern. Oh, sorry, because you can visualize the texture in a 3D environment. It's just easier overall. Uh, same process. Okay, you put a normal map on top, not in overlay mode because you can just put a normal map in Substance Painter, recognizes a normal map, and it works. You don't have to saturate whatever, whatever. Um, but yeah, you just use normal map. Uh, if you need a I mean, occlusion map, you can bake one in Blender or Substance Painter uh, by just using a normal map, really. That's a lot of that's one thing a lot of people don't know. Uh, you can use a normal map here to bake an ambient occlusion. Uh, so you also have some of the detail in the ambient occlusion. Looks pretty good. Okay. And you can do mass in Substance Painter too, uh, or whatever CAD software uh, you use to do your textures in a 3D environment. But this is how you do it in Photoshop and GIMP. Uh, I hope this help you guys. This is my first tutorial ever recorded. If there's anything you don't like, any feedback, please send it to me on my Discord. If you don't have it, skill issue. Um, but I hope this helped you guys anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching.